Hey, what's up everybody? This is Brian and in this screencast, we'll be exploring some of the changes that Swift 4 is bringing to dictionaries. We get a lot of cool things, sequence-based initialization, merge initialization, grouping, and more. Now, before we get started in earnest, I want to give a big shout out to Richard Kritz. Richard wrote the chapter in iOS 11 by Tutorials, which is the basis of this screencast. Thanks, Richard. We have a lot to do, so let's dive in. Kicking off our dictionary -a palooza of new features, we'll start off with creating dictionaries based off sequences. My first dictionary will be groceries. Here, I create a new dictionary using the zip function. You can also use an array of tuples to create your dictionary if that's your thing as well. With Swift 4, we now have an initializer which we can use to merge the dictionaries together. Here, I'll create a dictionary with a few duplicate values. Here, I'll create a dictionary of tuples that has each student organized by their respective house. Next, I'll create a new dictionary, first by mapping the values of the students into an array. Then, in the merge conflict, I'll add the two values together. The result is an array of students grouped by each house. I can also use this to combine user settings. Here, I have a default style dictionary. Now I'll create a user style dictionary. Now let's merge the dictionaries. In this case, we'll defer to the user settings versus the default settings. And that's how we merge our dictionaries. When working with dictionaries, values are returned as optionals. This makes sense as the key we are searching may not exist in that dictionary object. With Swift 4, we can pass in a key, but now provide a default value. This means that when we do a key lookup, the returned values are not optional since we know there will always be a value returned. Here I have an empty dictionary. I want to get how many house elves are in the dictionary, so I pass in a key, but I also provide a default value. By passing in a default value, I don't have to do any unwrapping. I just get back a number that I can use directly in my code. With Swift 4, filtering a dictionary preserves its structure in type in the result. Here's my grocery list. Now, let's get the odd groceries. This is now true with sets as well. The map function always returns ray, but we have map values that returns a dictionary that contains your dictionary structure and type. Swift 4 also adds grouping features to dictionaries. Here I have a list of names. Now, I can just group them together by a predicate. In this case, I'm grouping by the first letter of their name. Useful, yes, but what about in an actual object? First, I create a student object that contains the two properties, first name and last name. Then, I store a key path in a variable. Next, I create a bunch of students from Hogwarts. This takes in the students and creates structs for them using their first and last names. Finally, I group the objects using the key path for the last name. Again, I group them by the first letter of their last name. Working with mixed type dictionaries can be irritating in the best of times. This is because all the typecasting that is needed. Now we can use generic subscripts. To get started, I'll add an extension to collection. This extension will add a subscript which takes a sequence of indices. Here I create a subscript based on a sequence. With Swift 4, an associated type can now be constrained with a WHERE clause which simplifies generics. Now I create a text sentence and break it into an array then search the array by way of another array. These are but a few of the changes that Swift 4 brings to the table. As you can see, Swift 4 gives us a lot of tools to make our lives easier. To learn more about other changes, check out our other Swift 4 screencasts to keep, your up to date, keep yourself up to date with the language. And of course, keep on coming back to raywinderlich.com to learn more about other aspects of iOS development.